please take it away. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let me move this. Uh, can everyone uh, see my, uh, hear me now? Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Hong Yu, uh, a master's student at ETH. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, thank our organizers for uh, setting up um, uh, the remote presentation. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't uh, make it to Boston in person uh, with you, uh, but I will try to make the presentation uh, interactive and hope you would find it uh, interesting as well. Uh, so please interrupt me if you have any questions or I'm frozen. Okay, so uh, today I'm very excited to uh, talk to you about our work, Energet, uh, Fine-Grained Energy Attribution for Multi-Tenancy. Uh, this is a joint work with Michal and Theo. So uh, as we've uh, probably heard a million times, uh, the end of Dano scaling really means that uh, although we can still uh, jam more transistors or make bigger chips, um, we, ca uh, we can't curb uh, the voltage and therefore the power density, which is why everyone is concerned about energy uh, consumption. Um, this has been uh, exacerbated by uh, you know, the mighty AI models powered by a machine learning system, which are huge energy consumers uh, themselves. Uh, in fact, I started this project because I was measuring the energy consumption of one of our uh, machine learning pipelines, and the results didn't add up, uh, which really got me into the nitty gritty details of you know, software energy measurement. And yeah, so we really want to improve the energy efficiency, for example, for on-device or edge computing scenarios. But um, if we want to you know, face the monster, we have to uh, see the monster clearly first, right? Um, and also, it can be a sensitive topic because of its you know, social and economic so, impact. How are you? So, sorry to interrupt you, but your slides are not advancing. You're still seeing your title slide. Oh, sorry. Uh, let me reshare, uh, reshare it again. Okay, so uh, sorry about this. Uh, yeah, let me continue. So, um, yeah, what we really, uh, yeah, it can be a sensitive topic because it's uh, because of its social and economic impacts, and we really um, want to get the um, the calculation right here. So, uh, what software energy attribution? Well. It aims to determine the share of energy consumed by your program uh, and only your program. So you, uh, we don't want to uh, want other applications to temper our measurements. And though there are many you know, useful tools that allow us to measure the energy of our sulfur, uh, they are using coarse grain uh, attribution model. Uh, by that, I mean, uh, energy measurements are aggregated at the device level, uh, meaning that, for example, it's not considering the NUMA effect, which can include uh, imbalance uh, uh, in resource allocation. And also, um, uh, the energy accounting is you know, at the process level, uh, which, for example, doesn't take into account the different runtime statistics of each thread on different sockets. Uh, and also, it's not closely tracking the runtime dynam dynamics because we know that threads and processes uh, can be created and destroyed at runtime. And as uh, shown uh, in the figure, they are also prone to noisy neighbor effects in multi-tenant environments, where the measured energy of our program um, uh, is influenced by that of uh, others. Finally, uh, also the energy used by the attribution model itself is not separate from the energy measurement, uh, which, which can lead to uh, imprecise uh, results. So um, one of the primary corporates, if you like, uh, is the coarse hardware support we're having. Uh, in fact, you know, heterogeneous or even disaggregated hardware is increasingly shared by uh, many tenants in the cloud. Uh, but these devices uh, doesn't you know, natively support uh, software or task level energy attribution. For example, we have uh, CPU uh, on the CPU. We have REPL parameters as previ uh, previously introduced by previous speakers. 
uh, we have NVML on the GPUs and XVE uh, from Xilinx for FPGAs. So the main message of this work is uh, that fine-grained and software energy attribution is still possible uh, even with coarse-grained hardware support. And uh, in turn, our contribution is uh, threefold. Uh, first, we, um, we, we propose a threat level uh, NUMA aware uh, energy attribution model uh, for, uh, for uh, CPU and DRAM in multi tenant environments. Second, we uh, conduct a range of experiments with a prototype implementation to demonstrate that our model is valid, effective, and a robust to noisy neighbor effect. Um, yeah, and lastly, uh, we provide insights into uh, the opportunities and challenges on the way to energy aware heterogeneous clouds. Next, uh, I will delve into uh, every single equation on this slide uh, to explain our theoretical model in detail. Um, well, uh, probably not, uh, because I don't want to uh, make all of you go to sleep, uh, especially in the early morning. Uh, so uh, instead, what I'd like to do um, is to, you know, instead introduce the high-level principles of our method. And first, um, yeah, we differentiate the static power uh, and the dynamic one. Uh, and the static power is uh, explicitly sampled up front, and we only attribute the dynamic portion. Uh, then uh, to achieve a threat level and NUMA aware, uh, energy attribution, we conduct a per thread accounting uh, conditioned on socket level statistics. And uh, to circumvent the uh, noisy neighbor effect, uh, we introduce uh, the concept of uh, energy credits, uh, which is based solely on the exclusive resource usage, meaning that we only consider the resources used by the target program, uh, excluding that of the collocated tasks. And yeah, and lastly, we um, separate the energy uh, consumption of the attribution model from the consumption, well, from the measurements of the target problem. Um, but does our uh, theoretical model work in practice? Well, um, as a proof of concept, we uh, implemented uh, a prototype called Energet, uh, yeah, which is available on GitHub. And also, we constructed several uh, micro benchmarks as the target applications. So first, we have the CPU benchmark, which stresses the CPU utilization from 0 to 100% with equal number of threads and processes. Um, then similarly, we have memory, uh, the memory benchmark, uh, which sweeps uh, the DRAM usage from 0% to 100% uh, with one process. Then we have the mixed benchmark, which keeps the CPU, both the CPU and DRAM at around 50% uh, utilization. And for the um, noisy neighbor effects, we have the mix with neighbor uh, a benchmark, which launches two mix workloads, uh, one as the target program, another as the uh, noisy uh, neighbor. And so the objective here is really to you know, cover all utilization levels and to uh, emulate the noisy uh, neighbor effect. So first, uh, we want to validate our theoretical model and the prototype implementation. Uh, since the direct validation of those fine-grained energy attribution model is impossible in practice, um, we conduct a so-called validation by summation, meaning that we trace uh, all the energy, uh, well, uh, the energy provenance of all the programs running on our machine, uh, including uh, those micro, micro benchmarks. And if the attributed energies amount to the total uh, consumption of the machine, uh, our method is indirectly uh, validated. And we also modify a popular uh, Firefox plugin, making it uh, free running as the, as the uh, reference value. Uh, first, uh, let me uh, explain the values in this figure. So the total value here uh, is the energy consumed by the machine in white and dark gray, uh, measured by the, the plug-in and uh, energet respectively. And uh, the attributed energy here 
uh, is used by the corresponding micro benchmarks, the target programs, uh, also measured by Enerjet, uh, shown in uh, light gray. Uh, and finally, the overhead here is uh, the energy used by Enerjet itself uh, in black. Um, so here I'd like to highlight three observations. First, the total value measured by Enerjet is uh, equal to the reference value. And uh, the sum of uh, attributed energies plus the energy cost of the tool uh, matches the total value as well. And addition, uh, one addition observation, we can see that uh, there is slight uh, underestimation on the memory benchmark, uh, which is because we are only considering the primary memory, uh, sorry, the private memories, uh, excluding the, the shared ones, for example, used by uh, shared uh, libraries, which are uh, hard to reason about. Next, uh, we compare our prototype with other tools. Uh, so uh, this is a busy plot, so let me uh, break it down. Uh, the category on the left are the micro benchmarks uh, serving as the target application. And as before, these are the total energy cons uh, consumption of the machine. Uh, below are the energy attributed, uh, energies attributed to um, different benchmarks by various tools. Uh, so uh, several observations I'd like to go on here is that uh, first, we can see drastically different results from various tools. And, uh, and also we can see considerable you know, underestimation as well as uh, overestimation. Uh, and another observation here is that uh, Enerjet is uh, you know, uh, not affected uh, by the addition of noisy neighbors. So, um, but our method is by no means perfect. So, uh, and it has several limitations as well. Uh, firstly, it's not considering other, you know, energy related uh, factors, for example, shared memories, as I've mentioned, IO and caches. And the challenge here is really to integrate uh, external parameters with potentially various uh, hardware interfaces. And the validation by summation uh, that we talked about previously uh, does not give insights into individual accounting, uh, which uh, the challenge here really lies in per entity validation of the energy attribution model. And we believe that simulation could be of help here, uh, for example, using Gen 5, but we need to uh, be cautious about the added uh, our error margin, uh, our margin by the uh, simulation. And uh, also uh, our prototype uh, implementation still has non-negligible energy overhead. Uh, this is because of the fine grain tracing and frequent and you know counter sampling. Uh, we believe that this can be mitigated through a more optimized implementation. For example, different counters have um, not are always of the same importance, right? They can they could be sampled at different sampling rates. Um, and also we want to evaluate our um, model on realistic uh, benchmarks, which brings us to our final slide. Uh, I'd like to talk about the next steps we believe uh, should be taken to achieve energy aware heterogeneous cloud environments. Uh, first, um, we believe that it's really helpful to have secure and efficient hardware and software interface for, uh, uh, en for energy reporting. And this could enable us to sample counters with non-privileged permission and to propagate counter values in virtualized uh, environment. Secondly, um, we believe that you know, energy attribution for cloud services and heterogeneous devices uh, is extremely useful, and this can really enable you know, energy-based billing in the cloud. But cloud services like um, serverless or machine learning as a service are far from the hardware, which makes them um, quite challenging. And tracing energy provenance among layers of virtualization is, is also quite difficult, uh, much more difficult than doing it on a bare metal machine. And um, uh, the third point is that uh, although we have um, proposed this fine-grained energy attribution model, it's really hard to, uh, well, how to leverage this information still remains an open question. For example, should we run our programs on different calls on the same socket or on a different socket on the same machine. And finally, we believe that it's worth revisiting 
the energy efficiency of uh, traditional algorithms and data structures, which are uh, typically optimized uh, solely for performance. Uh, that uh, concludes my talk. Um, please feel free to check out our paper uh, and uh, code. Uh, and big shout out to Shell for his help in revising the manuscript. And thank you very much for your attention. And I'd like to take any questions. We can do one question, and I'm going to bring the mic to you, otherwise they won't hear the questions. Yeah, I have a couple of questions. Actually, we can, we're starting a 25-minute session right now, right? Oh, you have another talk. Okay, sorry. Um, how do you actually do the attribution? Do you factor in sharing of sockets, multiple applications using the same socket? And in this case, how do you actually do the attribution? What's the model? to different applications. So what is the input and output? How do you do this? OK, I see. Um, thanks very much for the question. Uh, I have a couple of backup slides. Um, yes, so these, um, so in terms of um, energy attribution model, we sample various contents. Um, so for example, we're sampling, uh, we're using the REPL um, uh, parameters. We are getting the CPU and DRAM uh, energy from uh, various um, applications. And specifically, we are sampling uh, the like per task or per thread uh, CPU time as the proxy. And we are using conditional probability to estimate the residence rate of each thread on different sockets in order to do a per socket attribution. Um, does that answer your question? Um. Yes, sort of. Um, I also don't understand the validation by summation. Uh, is uh, sounds to me that it's not going to validate that you're actually splitting the power across multiple applications in the right way, because by definition, it's going to sum up to the total, right? Yes. Uh, yes, uh, that's a great question. Um, you're completely right. So. Uh, we actually struggled a lot in validation because, as you said, this uh, like uh, validation by summation is not uh, like um, validating every single entity that we are tracking, and it's quite difficult because in practice it's really hard. It's really hard to find the wrong truth for each and every application, and this has been mentioned in prior work uh, that it's impossible to validate uh, like pr for each and every entity. Uh, that's why, yeah, we are using the validation by summation. But as I've mentioned, maybe like simulation could be of help here because you have a whole picture and you have the clouds, uh, sorry, the clocks. Uh, but um, yeah, like the simulation arrow could be another uh, layer of complexity. But yeah, great question. Yeah. So I just, just a final note. I'm, I'm not sure if you're aware there is an open source project um, that is called Kepler, K-E-P-L-E-R. Uh, that is attempting something uh, similar. So I just encourage you to take a look. Okay, thank you very much for the pointer. Uh, yeah, I, I've noted it down and I will check it out. Thank you. Okay, so let's thank uh, Rongyu one more time.